competition is pretty competitive. You've seen Derek Smith kind of running with the ones, uh, some snaps there. What's been the difference with him? You know, I think he did a really good job in the offseason uh, of spending a lot of time in the meeting room and just getting extra work. Um, I think he improved in the weight room and really dedicated himself in that area and, uh, and really bought into Coach Feely. Uh, and to be honest, the best thing that happened to Derek was Coach Feely and his staff. Uh, they did a tremendous job, you know, with him and countless other kids, if you haven't noticed. Uh, so I think the biggest difference you see in him is probably, or not probably, is a testament to our, to our strength program and also to him because he's really, you know, got, got himself in that meeting room and really helped himself, you know, mentally. But he's still got a long way to go. I was going to say, what have you seen from Amari and, and Gervin, you know, just kind of what, what they're doing out there is in the competition? The, I think the biggest thing that I've seen between them is, is um, it's just the culture that we've built in that room over the last few years, starting with Jamal Carter and Rayshon Jenkins, and then, you know, Redwine and Jaquan and, and the standard that they, that they, you know, have held and put up there. They understand it. Like, they've seen it. They know what it looks like. And that's the, that's the positives, you know, of – keeping you know your coaches the way that coach you know Blake has and coach Diaz and having continuity on the staff you know that's what you start to get and you start to build that you see that at other places who have had you know their staff stay and be around you see those that's why they play well you know they understand the standard they understand what it looks like you're keeping that continuity so to, to, to kind of answer your question I think they understand exactly what it is they understand what urgency is when I say it they understand how important it is and it's not just a word and, and what the biggest thing is, too, is they've actually seen when they are urgent and they, and they try to reach to the standard every day and are consistent how well they play. So as soon as they see the tangible thing, oh, I'm playing well because I'm doing these things, then all of a sudden you, they're bought in and it's over after that. It's easy. <laughs> Talk about the move that Derek Smith's been making this fall. I mean, it's been hard <clears> not to notice. And he's intercepting passes almost every day and all, it seems to be all over. The Derek Smith's done a really good job. I mean, I think he's, he's fought really hard. Uh, to focus on himself, but he still has a long way to go at the end of the day. I'm going to challenge him every single day, okay? And, but then the day, I, I truly believe this, and I'm not just, this isn't coach talk. I got a, you know, a four-way fight right now that these kids are getting after it. And, they're, and every day he does something good, then Gervin does, then Amari does, then Rob does, and then all of a sudden I, Keontre pops out of nowhere and, and does something really well. Um, and then there's days, you know, where they come out there and they, they don't do as well. So, and that's what we're looking for. We're trying to create on Green Tree what we know is the equation to success. And that's pushing these kids to the limit and, to, and seeing which one cracks or which one rises to the top. And, you know, Derek's done a good job, you know, to this point, but we're still, we're only in day five. You know what I mean? So we got a long way to go. You mentioned you, you feel like you've got four, but in your mind, do you still want to just have two primary guys when it comes to game time? Or do you want to have a rotation of three, maybe four balanced? Or how do you kind of envision what the season will look like with playing time? You know, like I told you guys in 2016 when we first sat up here, we're going to put Coach Diaz, Coach Baker, myself, Coach Rump, Coach Packy, Coach Stroud, we're going to put the people that we trust on the field. And if there's 11, then there'll be 11. If there's 14, then we'll put 14 on the field. If I got three, then there'll be three safeties that rotate in. If I got four, then great. I know the last two years I've kind of had Jamal and Rayshon for a year and then Jaquan and Redwine, you know, fought it out going into their junior year, and they won the job, and then they took it over their senior year. They just lapped everybody. I think this year is going to be a little different, um, and, and if just between the last, first few five days. So I anticipate it, you know, being a rolling deal, and, the get, and, and I love it because that's what we needed. We need competition. Green Tree is about competition. This program is about competition, and the more competition you have, the better your, your, all your players play. So... Right now, I got four that are competing really hard with a young guy that I really, you know, is starting to figure it out. He's, he's a smart kid, and that's what we want, and that's how it gets good. Mike Rump tells the story all the time. I didn't want to get – Mike Rump always said, if I got hurt, I didn't tell nobody because I knew if I got hurt and I was in that training room, someone was going to take my job, and that's what we want to get to. Well, you can only start two. Oh, sorry, go ahead, man. I was say, obviously, you can only start two, so what, what's it going to take to win the starting job? Maybe? What, are you, what are you specifically maybe asking them to do? Yeah, I know starting so important for you guys and you're <laughs> typing in your clicks and your subscriptions and all that, and I get it. Um, but at the end of the day, like, you really need to see who's in the game, mm -hmm. you know, who, who's who, and the fourth quarter who's in the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, a guy has to start, but at the end of the day, there might be a guy in the next series, and that guy may play more in the game. So, you know, 
I, I know it's coach, coach talk and it doesn't sell the papers and everything like that, but that's, that's our situation. If it's up to us, we'd have 22 starters. I mean, we're too deep. Now you're rolling. And you see that with the best teams in the country. I mean, they're rolling kids. I mean, you, all, you see one kid, next series, another kid's in. That's how, that's, that's how you get great, you know. So, I mean, I know that's not what you want to hear, but that's the truth. Yeah, from along those lines, uh, Bubba Bolden's going to be checking in here pretty mm -hmm. soon. Um, what's reality for him? You know, the biggest thing for Bubba um, is just getting him, you know, acclimated back into a program, um, getting him used to the weight room, how we do things, uh, the playbook. We, we, we're ready for him. We're, you know, we're, we're planning for him. We, you know, I've talked with Coach Feely and his staff, our training room. You know, right now the only thing we're going to focus on him is making sure that, you know, he's physically ready. You don't want to throw a kid, and I get everyone's like, Bubba's coming, and he's going to, you know, that does, that's not how this works. Like, and he knows that. We've had a lot of talks. we got to make sure that we do what's right with him so that we don't, he doesn't get hurt or he's not, you know, put him in a situation that he can hurt himself or hurt the team. And he's chomping at the bit, and sometimes you got to, you know, pull the kid back, and that's good. You'd rather throw water on him than have to fire him up. But we're going to be smart with Bubba. You know, we have, you know, he'll get here hopefully within the next week or so, and, you know, we'll take it slow. We're not going to rush him. Um, it's a long season. We got a long way to go, but the main focus will be getting him, you know, in football shape, putting on a helmet, getting used to the, you know, the whole thing, how we do things here, get him used to the playbook, ease him into it, much like we're doing with the freshmen, you know, we did in the beginning of summer. Um, go ahead, Susan. I want to ask you what it's like sharing Manny Diaz with the offense, and, <laughs> and, uh, and how much you gravitate towards the offense. It still seems he's, you know, over by the defense a lot. You know, it, it, I love it. Um, I've been around him for a long, long time. Uh, I know what he's thinking a lot of times before he has to say it. Um, he's what he watching him spread his culture and himself, you know, amongst this entire program has been really cool. Um, I've always known that he was going to be a great head coach one day, and I get it. He hasn't, you know, we haven't played a game yet and stuff like that, but. He just understands the big picture. His ability to see the 30,000 foot view at the same time, put his boots on the ground and work, you know, and, and, and grind on the ground is just unique. Um, so it's been really cool. It's been cool to see him. Like, we, you know, he moved with us and we're watching plays, but he's got the offensive play up and the defensive play up. And his ability to just kind of see both pictures, know what the issues are, know what's coming um, is really cool. And it's cool to have him in our room with that, you know, with Coach Baker and I. It's cool to have him in that room to, and, and to share him like that and just to, to have that perspective. So he's doing a great job in recruiting. Um, and he's been phenomenal. Uh, I thought he's, you know, that's the biggest thing as a head coach. Like, he's just done a really good job in recruiting, uh, re you know, speaking with those kids and making it a priority in this program. Um, so, I mean, he's, been, he's, done that, he's done exactly what I thought he would do. <laughs> Thanks. No yeah, problem. Thank you, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. We got, go ahead. I just want to ask one more. Has he changed at all in any way? Like, <laughs> has there been, like, any, anything about him that's a little different? None. I mean, he is who he is, and he always been. You know, he's demanding. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's detailed. He, he just pushes. Um, he expects, the, you know, the standard of Miami to be the standard in everything from the person who's, you know, dumping that water over there to Dan Enos, to myself, to Coach Baker, calling plays, to anybody. The standard of Miami is the standard of Miami. And he, under, he expects everyone to hold that, and he will not accept anything else. And he's been like that when he was a coordinator. That's what made him a great coordinator and a position coach before that. Thank you. No problem. Thank you, guys. Y'all have